Good evening. We will get started. Uh, it's 5.30. Um, welcome, bienvenidos, to our special board meeting on Monday, March 27th um, for our library book appeal. Um, we will start with our roll call. Uh, Director Smith? Here. Director Barrows? Here. Director Sproul? Here. I believe Director Decker will be here at some point. Um, I am. Oh, you are here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I can see you. <laughs> Director Decker. I'm here. And I am here, so we have quorum. Um, I will now turn this over to Dr. Snell to lead us through our meeting. Thank you, Director Zavala Ortega. Uh, the purpose for this meeting today is to review an appeal of the decision by the Instructional Materials Committee to keep the book Gender Queer in the library at Fort Vancouver High School. Multiple people asked the board to review this decision, and the committee determined that the book should remain in the high school library after an appeal of the teacher librarian's decision uh, to originally keep the book in the library. For some background for the board, Policy and Procedure 2021 Library Information and Technology Programs establishes the process for members of the public to request reconsideration of library materials. And so I'm going to take you through some of the steps from that policy and procedure. And throughout the evening, I'll pause at different points um, to take any questions or comments. Um, and if you just want to interrupt me too at any point, uh, feel free to do so. Um, the first step in the reconsideration process is an informal conversation uh, with the school librarian. In the review of this book, uh, the librarian was not available for this conversation, but the informal reconsider reconsideration was conducted um, by two executive directors, um, Bill Oman and Jim Gray, and the school principal, um, Kurt Scheidel. And individuals challenging the book were given an opportunity to share their concerns in two different meetings. Uh, the rationale for including the book was also shared. Uh, and the concerns collected by meeting attendees about the book were read out loud to the teacher librarian for consideration. At the conclusion of the informal re reconsideration conversation, uh, the decision was made by the teacher librarian to retain the book in the library. Uh, and you all have received the notes um, from those meetings and the email correspondence that related to this step of the process. The second step in the book reconsideration process is a formal reconsideration. So we have first step is informal, second step is formal, and this is a review by the Instructional Materials Committee. And the procedure requires all the committee members to read and evaluate the book, uh, review materials provided by all parties, read reviews of the challenged book. Um, they discuss the book in context of the educational program, and uh, for the audience that it was intended. Um, they try to look at the entire work of the book, weighing the values and faults against each other. And then they base their final decision on, uh, on the appropriateness of the material for its intended in educational use. At the end of this formal review process, um, the committee did determine that the book should remain in the library. And at that point, individuals who disagree with the committee's decision do have the right to appeal to the board of directors for reconsideration. And that's, that's why we're here this evening, uh, because members of the community have asked the board to reconsider the Instructional Materials Committee's decision. So the board of directors review is the third step in this book reconsideration process. And the purpose of the board review is defined in the uh, policy and procedure. It's to determine um, the first question is whether the committee applied the appropriate criteria in their review. And secondly, whether the committee followed the proper process. And so the board received copies of all the documents from step one and two of the reconsideration process. And of course, we're at step three today. Um, and that the materials included emails sent, received by staff members and the complainants. And the board also, I know, reviewed the book Gender Queer as well. So again, tonight, our, our purpose in meeting is for you to deliberate and answer these two questions. Did the committee apply the appropriate criteria? And did the committee follow the proper process as outlined in the procedure? If the board decides the answer to both questions is yes, uh, the decision of the committee will remain, and, and so that would be that the book would remain in the library. 
And if the board decides that the answer to either question is no, uh, then the board will decide the outcome of the challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause um, as we've kind of outlined the process for this evening's meeting and see if there are any questions or comments um, and uh, just invite board directors to unmute and um, share or ask. I have a question. Um, and first of all, thank you for laying out that process um, and the background, um, kind of what has led up to um, tonight's meeting. Um, so the question, just to clarify, the questions that we're answering tonight um, are these two questions that you have posted here. Um, we're not necessarily answering the question, should this book be banned or should this book stay in the library? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, that the the appeal is clearly laid out in the policy and procedures for the board is to to focus on the criteria that was used and the process that was followed. Um, and so, not necessarily for you to just to say that you like this book or don't like this book or think this book should stay or go. It's about did the um, the individuals and the teams uh, as a part of this process, be it the teacher librarian and the instructional materials committee, did they do their job as outlined um, in the in the policy and procedures? Thank you for that clarification. And this is Director Decker, and I want to say that I really appreciate that we have such a comprehensive set of procedures and criteria to follow. Um, when there's so much passion and disagreement between our members of the community, it's um, nice to have this specific set of criteria and rules that we need to follow. Thank you, Director Decker. Any other wanted, questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Director Sproul. No, I just wanted to thank, I think preparing for this um, appeal meeting, the special meeting, it was really helpful, all of the documentation that was compiled um, by the team, both all of the community feedback and correspondence, and in addition to the documentation about the actual, um, the second step. And um, so we were able to review that in advance, which was extremely helpful. So thank you to the team. Okay, well, um, I will go ahead and then start the um, kind of, I guess, the formal uh, appeal part of our meeting after outlining the process here, um, and we'll work through the two questions. So the first question for you to consider is, did the committee, being the Instructional Materials Committee, apply the appropriate criteria? And again, I will walk through the, the documentation that you've had access to, and then um, can pause at the end, but please interrupt if there's any question or clarification or comment that you would like to make. So each member of the committee read the entirety of Gender Queer to determine if the book met the criteria established in our procedure 2021 uh, regarding library materials and um, their requirements. And so the committee considered the input shared from all the citizens challenging the book. They considered the information from the teacher librarian. They also looked at um, published reviews of the book and they also looked at other districts and how they had handled um, potential challenges to this text as well. The committee based its decision on criteria outlined in our procedure 2021 that I referenced before. And specifically, they included how the book is intended to be used in the context of the educational program and the audience for which it, is, it was selected, the values and faults weighed against each other of the entire work rather than just extracting specific passages or parts, and then weighing the conflicting opinions um, based on the materials as a whole. And so after they went through that process, they did vote. Um, and their vote was to keep the book uh, at Fort Vancouver High School Library, which is why we're here today for the appeal. Um, and they shared that that decision was made based primarily on several factors. The first was that the book is available to high school students and the book lists the intended audience to be 16 and up. The book is not part of the taught curriculum, it is part of the library collection for the students who seek it out. And so students who seek out books on um, specific topics are typically those who identify with the subject matter and characters and um, are looking to find representation and shared meaning with those characters and stories and books for those who have been sometimes marginalized can be um, deeply important for mental health, future success and understanding of oneself. And the other um, couple of factors that they cited, the first was that the pages 
that were read at the board meeting and referenced in the reconsideration request, um, the committee did not feel they represented the content of the entire book. And while these pages um, and particularly the images are not ideal, and the committee agrees graphic, controversial, and at times shocking, the concerns of these pages are outweighed by the value to students of the entire work. And finally, the committee felt that when you looked at the book in its entirety, um, not just a few pages taken out of context, it was clear to the committee that the purpose of the work as a whole is not to sexually arouse the reader or appeal to a prurient interest, but instead it's um, um, thinking about the context of the whole and its uh, attempt to build understanding for the reader of the experiences of someone who is gender non-binary and the confusion and angst that can result from not matching traditional societal norms and not yet fully understanding oneself. And so this is what the instructional material committee shared in their decision that was communicated with the complainant um, and why the appeal then was brought to you. So I'll pause again here. This is our first question, whether the committee applied the appropriate criteria or not, and see if there are any questions or comments about this question. And then at the end of this part, um, Director Zavala will actually ask for a roll call to, to, do you agree, did the committee follow the appropriate criteria or not? Well, um, I have to say that I find that criteria requiring the review of the entire book particularly important, but, and also difficult. So when the pages are, when passages, wording, and illustrations in literature provoke a very strong immediate reaction, but then is also isolated from the work as a whole, we can lose sight of what the author intended. So to look at the whole literature experience, I feel is incredibly important. And like I said, very difficult to do sometimes. Thank you, Director Decker. <clears throat> I, I found the ruling as it outlined the specific criteria that was considered um, very thorough and um, addressed. I mean, I was reconciling kind of the, the ruling against the procedure and I could kind of pinpoint directly um, what they were responding to. And I did, I did see that there was um, clear consideration of the criteria outlined in the policy and procedure. Thank you, Director Sproul. Any other questions or concerns about this? I know when I was reviewing, um, you know, I, I specifically called out some criteria that was referenced in the Instructional Materials Committee. Um, I should note that there are other criteria in Policy um, and Procedures 2021 related to library materials. Um, and then there's also criteria related in policy 2020 related to just instructional materials in particular. And it does note the difference between the two, the instructional materials as um, part of 2020 are, are the top curriculum, um, uh, at least mostly outlined in that, in that policy, whereas the library materials do have some special considerations, which is what the committee looked at in this situation. So if I, there aren't any other questions or comments at this point, then Director Zavala, I will turn it over to you. I, I would ask that we do a roll call related to this top number one question, whether the committee applied the appropriate criteria. Okay. Um, so we will be doing a roll call. So vote either yes or no, if the committee applied the appropriate criteria for the book, Gender Queer. Um, Director Barrows? Yes, I believe they did. Direct Director Decker? Yes, they did. Director Sproul? Yes. Director Smith? Yes. And I also agree. Yes. Okay, so we have reviewed the first question. Um, and now we will go into the second question. And like I did the last time, I'll try to give you context. Um, and please interrupt me at any point. And then at the end, there'll be a place for questions and concerns or comments. Um, so the second question for your consideration tonight is whether the committee followed the proper process as outlined in the procedure. And as I shared at the beginning, the, pre the procedure has three steps to challenge the process. 
The first step is an informal resolution between the complainant and the teacher librarian. In this situation, there were a number of complainants. So two separate meetings were set up, one in the morning and one in the afternoon to accommodate complainant schedules. And the purpose of the meeting was to gather input from those complainants, to share the teacher librarian's rationale for having the book in the library, and provide sources for the book in question. Because the teacher librarian did not attend the meeting, uh, district designees I shared was um, um, there and shared the rationale and sources. Um, and um, we had two note takers capture the complainant's concerns. Uh, we didn't want to miss anything that came up in that. Those concerns were then provided to in written form and then also read to the teacher librarian to be used in reconsidering the text. And after reviewing all those concerns that were shared, um, then the teacher librarian has to make a decision. And in this case, the teacher librarian chose to keep the book in the library. And complainants were then informed of that decision and then appealed that decision to the instructional materials committee. And so I'll pause since this is the first step of the process and just we'll break it apart that way to see if you have any questions about that first step. I appreciate um, kind of having these steps outlined because it's, um, you know, just in looking and looking at the process that that very first step is kind of that informal, um, you know, reconsideration and having um, having it start with the with the teacher librarian, I can see that through in reading through the actual procedure, um, you know, starting with um, what seems like um, just kind of that informal, um, you know, appealing to the person that selected it and um, listening, listening to why they would like to have that reconsidered. So having kind of that um, Having it start with that more informal process, I think, is um, is helpful to see before moving on to the more formal, um, you know, review committee, the board, things like that. Thank you. And, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Director. And I just want to piggyback on what Director Barrow said. Is is that um, I understand that there might be some concerns that the actual school librarian was not present at those two meetings in you know in person but i will note that everyone that had a concern regarding this book had the opportunity to discuss their reasons for their concern and to listen with a higher level representative of our school district and um, i feel like having the opportunity to um, voice your concern and then listen to feedback from uh, other district representatives, and I want to say higher level district representatives, I think um, helps satisfy that first informal procedure. Almost, almost above and beyond because it, it uh, created those spaces, you know, to share, you know, the collective, you know, because I know it wasn't just one person having a concern and bringing it to the librarian, but you know, groups of people and that, that the district created these opportunities um, for people to uh, come forward, I think was kind of above and beyond that, um, you know, just setting up something directly with the library. It's like, let's create these opportunities if other people have concerns to share those concerns. Any other questions or comments about this part of the process? Okay, then I'll keep us moving. Um, the second step in the process is the review by the Instructional Materials Committee. And as I previously, previously shared, uh, each committee member did read the book. Um, they discussed the criteria to use in their appeal consideration. And then they did vote on whether to uphold or reverse the decision of the teacher librarian. And in question number one, we reviewed the rationale that they provided complainants in coming to their decision. Um, and I'm happy to go back through that if you would like, but it is a part of the question one as well. So um, I'll pause again and see if you have any questions or comments. I will note that um, in this part of the 
as we look at process, I think that the original, as we read that informal reconsideration, the idea is that a teacher leader or teacher um, librarian and a parent um, from the school would sit down and have a conversation about a text. And this situation is a little unique in terms of we had a, a number of community complainants, not necessarily connected to the school. Um, and so I, I, I do think that we should maybe look at that informal part of the policy procedure to try to better reflect um, the needs of complainants and the situations of teacher librarians. Um, uh, you know, the idea is to bring people together and share uh, ideas. And I think that happened in this process. Um, but I think we also might want to look at that um, just as we move forward, because it's it's different than was in the past. Um, and so that's something that I know our team is thinking about, and we would want to bring those forward separate from this decision. But I just feel like it's a place to call that out um, when we talk about process moving forward. And so if there are any other questions about the second question, whether the committee followed the proper process, then I will turn it over to you, Director Zavala, and um, a similar process like we did in question one. Well, Dr. Snell, I was going to add on to what you were saying um, about kind of as as we've gone through this process and kind of seen the procedure in action. Um, I think we, you know, as we experience it, I think it's, uh, you know, one of those things that we can learn from. So I would agree with you and kind of after all of this is said and done, kind of having that chance to um, look through it and where do we need to maybe provide some clarification or, um, you know, some updates to the procedure. Um, you know, since we've, since we've gone through it. Thank you, Dr. Becker, Dr. Barros. Um, uh, so again, we will be doing a roll call vote, either yes or no, if the committee followed the proper process for this challenge. Um, so Director Barros? Yes. Director Decker? Yes, they did. Director Sproul? Yes. And Director Smith? Yes. And it's also a yes for me. Um, so at this point, um, would you like me to summarize, Director Zavala? Yeah, okay. Okay. So the board has weighed in on both questions. Um, the board voted five to zero um, that the committee did apply the appropriate criteria. And the board voted five to zero that they felt the proper process was followed. And so I can give um, maybe a summary of what this means um, moving forward, and then I'll um, need to kind of recapture this with our team and then communicate that decision with all parties um, involved. So basically the board has determined that the Instructional Materials Committee did apply the appropriate criteria and followed the proper process. And therefore the decision of the IMC, the Instructional Materials Committee, to allow the book to stay in the library stands. Um, based on procedure 2021, the next step is for me to go ahead and notify all concerned parties of your decision and the review. Um, and then I will summarize some of the comments and discussion in this meeting and provide that notification. Additionally, according to the district's current procedure, the challenge book will not be subject to reconsideration. Um, it spells out in the procedure for a minimum of three years. Um, unless there is some sort of substantive change of circumstances uh, as determined by um, either my position or a designee. Um, and so that would also apply to other high school libraries as well as we look at texts um, that are out there um, and the standards um, that have been followed through this process. So at that point, unless, or at this point, I guess I should say is uh, the hearing is is over, and so the appeal has been heard and a decision has been made. Um, and I'll turn it back to Director Zavala for any final call comments and uh, potential closure of the meeting. I think I just want to reiterate. I think agreement with uh, my colleagues and that we appreciate um, just the thorough thoroughness of this and um, the time that it's spent and making sure that our community members have been heard and making sure that um, acknowledging um, their appeal. Um, so do we have any other questions or comments? No? So we appreciate everyone's time. It is now 5.54 and our meeting is over. Thank you. Good night.